at the University of California, San Diego, is the hum of a world-class chemistry lab. And la, 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 la. No. <laughs> the hum of a world-class chemist. La, 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 la. My name is Mario Molina. I received the Nobel Prize in 1995. Mexican-born chemist Mario Molina literally helped save the planet from burning up when he and fellow chemist Sherwood Rowland discovered that man-made industrial chemicals were burning a hole in the Earth's ozone layer, exposing people around the world to harmful ultraviolet radiation. Together with my colleague, Cherry Rowland, we predicted that these chemicals would eventually harm this natural ozone layer, and consequently that something had to be done about this problem. They won the Nobel Prize for discovering that one of the main culprits burning up the Earth's ozone layer was, of all things, refrigerators, or more specifically, the chemical refrigerants inside them, chemical refrigerants known as chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. CFCs that, when refrigerators were thrown out, would evaporate up to the ozone layer. CFCs that were also used in the manufacturing of aerosol sprays for everything from body deodorant to many household cleaners around the home. Aerosol sprays that found their way drifting up to the ozone layer. Spray cans became extremely common uh, in the United States, 1940s, 1950s. Typically, there were about 30 to 40 spray cans in each home in the United States. What happens with refrigerators? If they don't break down in, inside a home, they would eventually be thrown away. And at that time, the refrigerant would just evaporate. So practically, uh, the entire amount that was manufactured by industries in all countries, there, there were millions of refrigerators, millions of spray cans. Dr. Molina says, based on readings at the time, CFCs released into the atmosphere were found to be destroying the ozone layer over Antarctica. And then some measurements for, that were done with a very special airplane, the, called the ER-2, that could fly to at very high altitudes. Uh, th that airplane was able to measure in the middle of the ozone hole why was it disappearing and very conclusively demonstrated that it was indeed these industrial chemicals that were causing this very large, unexpected hole. The ozone was being depleted more than 99%, so it was really disappearing, and that's why we labeled it an ozone hole. By 1987, the international community gathered in Montreal, Canada, to deal with the imminent danger posed by a hole in the ozone layer adopting remedies proposed by Dr. Molina and other scientists to protect the ozone layer by phasing out the production of chemicals responsible for ozone depletion. World leaders from U.S. President Ronald Reagan to British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher signed an international treaty known as the Montreal Protocol. It was President Reagan accepted the signs and so did Margaret Thatcher in England. She was, after all, the, the pharmaceutical chemist herself and they agreed that uh, an international agreement had to be uh, conveyed, and that happened. That's a Montreal Protocol, a very big success in terms of controlling this damage. And the ozone layer is recovering. The Reagan years in the 1980s, says Molina, were all about cooperation to heal the ozone layer. However, today, he says, the current U.S. president is far from cooperating when it comes to today's present enemy, the burning of fossil fuels that Molina says is causing global warming and climate change, a crisis the current U.S. president dismisses as a hoax. All of this with the global warming and that, a lot of it's a hoax, it's a hoax. And that scientists like Molina are somehow wrong about climate change. Climate change is much more difficult to deal with First of all, because the, the, it, it's caused mostly by burning fossil fuels. And of course, burning fossil fuels is very important for the economy in many different aspects. 
but most importantly, it became politicized. Meanwhile, says Molina, climate change-related natural disasters are costing the U.S. billions of dollars each year to deal with. The, the well-documented damage, the United States lost billions of dollars last year with the hurricanes in Florida and in, in other places, and Puerto Rico, uh, uh, of course, uh, was also very badly damaged. All that is a, an enormous loss of resources that could, have been, could be avoided. We know that it's difficult to do that, but we know it's going to get worse if we do nothing about it. Despite current setbacks to battling climate change, Dr. Molina says he remains optimistic that reversing the negative impact of climate change can be achieved. I am optimistic. The main reason is we know it can be done. We have done it with, with the ozone layer. Do we want to leave for our future generations a planet where they can have at least the same standard of living that we have now, if not better? No matter his advancing age, yes, hello. Dr. Molina says he plans to keep traveling and sharing what he knows with the world, with the goal, he says, of changing society for the better. I'm 75 years old. I have hopefully another five or 10 years, but I certainly don't plan to re do not plan to retire as long as I can work. While Dr. Molina says he never considered himself a genius in school early on, his passion for science was ignited at an early age in his hometown, Mexico City. I was born in Mexico City, so I'm a dual citizen. I'm a Mexican citizen as well as a U.S. citizen. Of course, I myself was educated in Latin America, although by the time I, I wanted to get a PhD, I moved first to Europe and then to the University of California. I got my PhD in California, and then I remained for a number of years doing my research in the United States but went back to, to Mexico. Dr. Molina is often asked how he deals with the fame of winning the Nobel Prize. When I first got the Nobel Prize, it was, of course, a, a high honor, and I was sort of overwhelmed with, uh, with such a, an enormous recognition. But not long thereafter, I also realized it, it, it is a responsibility. Particularly after receiving the Nobel Prize, I thought I could do more in Mexico. For example, to try to improve science. Mexico, like many developing countries, invests too little, something like half a percent of their GDP on basic science. That's very little. But that will improve through education. And we start in elementary schools, where the new ways of teaching have much more impact on, on the small children than the traditional way of teaching, which consists basically on memorizing. And that's old fashioned. That still happens in many places around the planet. But we know from the science of teaching, the children do science. They actually carry out experiments, hands on stuff. They learn much more. And it's also much more fun. But the most important thing, they learn how to reason. They, they learn how the scientific method based on, on, on facts, based on observations. They learn how to think. What I tell young people is the enormous importance that science has had on, on civilization, particularly beginning at the 20th century. And just think of uh, the, the fact that the number of, of, of cellular phones, so we have billions of those, that's all technology that came about uh, uh, science, but also human health. It, it, again, we've been proved enormously fascinating to do science. Find what you like, but then do it with passion, because then you'll be able to do it very well, and you will contribute to the benefit of everybody, which is very satisfying. My life is, is really, I've been lucky. When I was a young child and started doing science, I didn't realize at that young age that you could actually be a scientist and earn your, uh, your living as being a scientist, which of course, as soon as I realized it, I continued with my obsession of, of uh, being a scientist. I was on a presidential advisor group in the United States and in Mexico advising presidents as well. It doesn't matter where the emissions 
from these greenhouse gases come from. It doesn't matter which part of the planet, they affect the entire planet. So the only way to solve those problems is if we all work together. We can all improve and at the same time improve the planet as well. I uh, think it is extremely rewarding when you do science and you find out you're finding something out for the first time that nobody else has been measured before. You have, you're doing some benefit to society that uh, increases your this rewarding feeling. I'm very proud of being from Mexico, being Mexican. As a young boy, Mario Molina was an accomplished violinist and says he dreamed of playing professionally with a symphony. I used to play the violin myself when I was a, a kid, and I regret very much stopping that, but I'm going to take it up again. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, for example, is something magnificent. <laughs> It's an odd to happiness. La, 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 la. Dr. Mario Molina, an ode to science, to cooling the planet, to imagining all of life's many possibilities. Okay. Ooh, that's nice to remember. Beautiful.